all the time has come to draw a curtain to our program but it's not the end it's just a beginning of new opportunities a very good afternoon to all present here i priya tiwari on behalf of dr dy patel institute of management and research would like to extend a very warm welcome to today's chief guest dr neera saxena advisor aict guest of honor Dr. N. J. Pawar, Sir, Vice Chancellor, Dr. D. Y. Patel, Vidya Pit Pune, Mr. Pankaj Divan, Founder and CEO, Idea Labs Future Tech Ventures, Dr. Meghna Billare, Director and Conference Convener, D. Y. P. I. M. R., and Dr. Vishal Vadaskar, Sir, Associate Director, D. Y. P. I. M. R., and all the academicians from knock and corners of the nation, in this validatory ceremony of A. I. C. T. sponsored. Two days national conference on redefining business management post COVID technology and economic challenges. Curiosity is more important than knowledge because curiosity leads to learn more, and these two days of national conference has provided fruitful insights and innovative research ideas from renowned industry and academic stalwarts. it not only geared up the participants enthusiasm but also provided an impactful environment which will help in nurturing new concepts though covid-19 shattered the business world in an unexpected way the technological and economic measures taken led the foundation of post covid new era stimulating emerging businesses and redefining new concepts of business management the same spirit is required to be carried on by the research fraternity to redefine businesses overcoming technology and economic challenges so that society can be benefited from it with these words now i would like to request our dynamic leader dr meghna billare ma'am conference convener and director dypimr to welcome this intellectual gathering ma'am Good afternoon, Mr. Saxena sir, Pawar sir, Divan sir, and all the participants. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to share you with you that we have received huge response across the country with good number of participants and for the research papers for our conference on redefining business management post COVID technology and economic challenges sponsored by AICT. Uh, we were blessed to have AICT Chairman Dr. Anil Sahasrabuddin for inaugural ceremony, along with uh, Dr. Parag Kalkar, Dean Management and Commerce, Dr. Uh, Mr. G K Pillai, and eminent speakers uh, from industry and academics. Uh, I would say that an institute can do this event only when we are guided, mentored, and supported by management, and we are really fortunate to be led by visionary leader Dr. P D Patil sir, and guided, nurtured, supported by young, dynamic Dr. Somnath. Patil Sir, Secretary Dr. D. Y. Patil, Unitech Society. I would also like to express my heartfelt uh, gratitude to AICT for encouraging and supporting Institute for various initiatives. Uh, our institute so far has started three other FTPs, and we were working on Unnat Bharat projects as uh, well. And even this conference is funded by AICT. Uh, we are really grateful to AICT for the support uh, for conducting all these activities. Uh, i appreciate the paper presenters who have also come up with uh, so many novel ideas and research initiatives that uh, i'm sure it would help academics and industry in the revival stage of pandemic i am here i would like to say that i am a proud representative of enthusiastic energetic and responsible te team who has left no stone unturned to make this conference flawless and i'm really proud of you all my team and once again i am very grateful to nj pawar sir neeraj saxena sir and divan sir for gracing the validatory function thank you all, all all of you for being with us for this conference thanks a lot thank you ma'am thank you ma'am ma for your kind words now i would like to request dr tejashree talla ma'am hod mba for further deliberations
good afternoon one and all it's my honor to introduce dr neera saxena dr neera saxena is an advisor with the aict minister of education and is currently heading its institutional development cell idc which operates schemes to fund infrastructure and institutional activities in aict approved colleges he is pioneer to introduce aict idea and aict spice offered by the idc he has earlier headed the policy and academic planning bureau prime minister special schemes for students for jammu and kashmir and skill development cell of aict since june 2018 dr saxena is currently on deputation to aict from technology information forecasting and assessment council that is tifac india's technology think tank where he has been working as a scientist since april 2000 he was a member of the team that scripted technology vision 2035 for the country and deeply involved in development of technology roadmap for education first ever foresight exercise for this sector as a part of the team implementing projects emerging out of technology vision 2020 which was released by TIFAC in 1996 Dr Saxena piloted the activities of Mission Reach a major initiative to reorient the higher science and technology technical education and make it relevant to industries he he was selected by the department of science and technology to undergo executive education program on science and technology to undergo executive program which is on science technology and innovation policy at jf kennedy school of government at harvard university in 2006 he was trained in project management for world bank funded projects at the international training center of ilo in turning in 2008 he was the part of the team that worked on detailed project report for national innovation program in india in 2008 He was also a member secretary of the working group for SNT in SMEs for 12th five year plan of the government of India and developed the detailed project report of the national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical system which was launched by DST prior to his association with PIFAC Saxena Dr Saxena was a CSIR research fellow and post doctor fellow in national physical laboratory New Delhi he was specialized in the area of acoustic remote sensing and its application to air pollution and was involved in establishing country's first indigenous doppler sonar capable of remotely profiling wind uh, wind and turbulence in the lower atmosphere so we welcome you to this conference now i i would like to request dr meghna bilari ma'am to felicitate dr neeraj saxena sir Welcome, Neera Saxena, sir. Sir, I hand over the session to you now. I have to speak now. Yes, sir. Okay, so it's really a pleasure for me to be part of this event. and let me begin by offering my greetings to one and all in this virtual assembly of academic leaders yeah. researchers and teachers experts on the screen of the screen and those switching in between <laughs> so uh, let me first thank the organizers of this conference uh, for having me uh, for having invited me to this a valedictory session and i am absolutely confident that uh, two days of deliberations were really fruitful and uh, all the intended objectives of this workshop have been realized in full measures and the conference is really a success uh, i have never been a student of management uh, a regular student but uh, have exposure to management uh, aspects through executive education programs and in fact i have enjoyed them more than my own science and technology courses uh, 
have been basically trained in technology foresight and uh, have gravitated gravitated towards education and uh, so i tend to take slightly off beat track when it comes to education and uh, uh, as i see rather foresee as a technology foresight person is that uh, there is a shift happening in education and what we should be focusing on is learning not education and the two are different education uh, as i say is uh, corrective restrictive and prescriptive but the learning has to be adaptive purposed and personalized so that is the difference i see between the two education and learning so all along for the industrial society that we have had for about uh, two centuries education was fine it 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 was befitting but now with arrival of uh, internet uh, we are into the knowledge age and what we need is learning we should have all the systems supporting learning and to be very specific it should be experiential learning the systems that i mean or even the sub systems which include the classrooms the teachers the syllabus institutions examinations all that we are having currently support education and we need to shift towards learning it has already started happening and pandemic has made it very clear to us the focus is now very clear the way to go forward we cannot cling on to education it's it's not working we had classrooms and in those classrooms from the first row online education is happening we we cannot uh, deny this not just the students but even the teachers are learning online these days so as i foresee and even our honorable prime minister has said that virtual learning virtual education is going to be the future and recently digital university was also talked about something uh, from my previous organization tifac we had demonstrated this concept of virtual university before dr kalam when he was the president so it is it was in 2006 that we demonstrated and finally it has happened uh, most of the education in the decades to come will happen in an online format and that will be the mainstream and i often say that uh, education needs a covid moment and by covid i mean i expand c o v i d where c stands for conventional o for open v for virtual i for internet based and d for distance why do we have five different streams let them converge into one virtual and let it be left to the learner which mode or stream he or she wants to take so we should forget about all these different streams let it be just learning or education because education is going to be learner centered now so we have to accept this and change the systems and all this is because we have moved from industrial society to knowledge society so uh, resisting changes and trying to hold on the systems 
that were built for uh, industrial society are not going to work. It's not going to work. So we need to swim with the changes. So uh, we need to empower the learners, make them autonomous and uh, give them flexibility to choose. Now, uh, there is a change in the behavior of the learners. Uh, we have grown up uh, making notes, writing them so many times, making mind maps, doodling. All this for was for memorizing things, to put them in our memory. And as and when we need, we should be able to recall. So that was a structure, that was the format. And uh, students no longer do this because we have, as humans, we have evolved, we have developed technologies and uh, as a uh, as an evolutionary process, we have outsourced many of our faculties, many of our abilities to the technologies. So memories is one more uh, of our uh, assets that we are handing out to the technology. So we have uh, been memorizing things, but now we can always uh, preserve it outside and very efficiently recall. So uh, this has a direct bearing on the way we teach and learn. So we can see a uh, lot of technologies uh, making inroads. And uh, with one more technology that I foresee, that is brain-computer interface, there is a possibility that learning itself will become obsolete. But that will take some more time, and we should not get worried about it. Uh, the syllabus we have been creating for teaching, uh, teachers have uh, try to cover that. But they sh the syllabus should be now uh, a set of dots that have to be covered by the students but uncovered by the teachers. And the teachers uh, as sage on the stage are no longer acceptable. They have to evolve as mentors, guides, pathfinders, counselors, and this is nothing new. They have performed exactly this role before the industrial society. So in all our gurukuls, they were mentors, guides, pathfinders, all the roles were actually uh, what I say or foresee have already been there. So there is nothing new that I'm saying. It has already existed, pre-existed the industrial society. And with uh, arrival of more technologies as the computational technologies, as the communication technologies gallop, uh, we will see that our classrooms will also become things of past. Uh, they are uh, designed to support education, not really learning. And if you see that uh, there are many students who uh, are not really interested in class. And classrooms are not designed for many of them. There are introverts. There are uh, students who do not keep pace with the rest of the class. And uh, we actually force them to sit in those classrooms. So it promotes education. It makes uh, school happy. It makes teachers happy. It makes the institution happy, the school boards happy. But uh, are we really uh, confident that the learner is happy? And if the learner is not happy, then we are not really uh, delivering on what is expected from us. So uh, the classrooms will change and uh, the walls that we have will have, uh, as I foresee, they will have uh, volumetric screens and uh, there'll be uh, AR, VR, 
artificial intelligence, real-time translation, all these uh, technologies will uh, be able to create scenarios uh, in those four walls, which we call as classrooms. So all this will, uh, will, will uh, transform. And uh, case studies, uh, which are heavily banked upon in management education, will also become very lively through these AR, VR technologies. And if you look at uh, what students will expect uh, now that the pandemic is over, it is not just uh, a lecture uh, from the stage, but the students now will expect the teachers to tell about the videos, about the other learning material. So far, uh, it has been a descriptive approach in the classrooms. But now things will change. Now we have two batches of uh, two years. Uh, the learners who are confined and had no other choice but to learn online. So there will be a change in the expectations also. So teachers will have to be prepared for delivering uh, blended education now. So it's not just a lecture uh, or a speech that uh, learners would expect. So this is something uh, the, the academic fraternity will have to be really uh, be prepared for. And uh, there is a very, uh, I've been very passionate about examination reforms and, uh, and I've been a very strong votary of stopping the exams altogether. Uh, they don't fit in to the schemes now. We can uh, put things into memory, recall, and examinations were exactly for that. So on a lighter note, I expand EXAM as examining Xeroxing ability of mind. Everybody agrees with that. I have said it at many platforms and everybody agrees with that. So we should actually, as academic leaders, academicians, uh, we should really uh, give a thought to it as to, is it really serving any purpose? We uh, encourage students to use Google throughout the year, but in the exams, we don't want them to use that. So how uh, no, ridiculous it is. After all, at their workplace, again, they are going to use those technologies and facilities. So we must uh, show maturity and uh, evolve out of that. And uh, I recommend that EXAM should be replaced with TASK, which is testing of abilities, skills, and knowledge. And when we teach or focus on abilities, skills, and knowledge, our head, hands, and heart, all three are involved. So in the process that we have uh, currently, in the education that we have currently, it is only knowledge, very little of uh, heart and hands. So we should really be thinking about this and uh, post pandemic, uh, these will be some of the things that we have to be really be worried about. And interestingly, uh, COVID was a noun and it has become an adjective now. It has become an adjective. So world is changing. The examination system needs a change. The education system also needs a change. We need to see it from a new lens. We have a new education policy, which should be used as a fulcrum to uh, further the changes that uh, the whole system warrants. Uh, so I think I should stop here and thank you once again, uh, the organizers of this conference and look forward to be in your campus someday. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you sir, for sparing valuable time with us and providing valuable insights on what should be focused with respect to education sector in this paradigm shift. 
as you highlighted experiential learning and technological changes glad to share that under dypimr umbrella we started focusing on technological transforms in all the areas that is required in this paradigm shift thank you once again sir thanks a lot sir everything is theoretical impossible until it is done and this is proved by our guest of honor dr nj pawar who has taken a who has taken research to new heights at national and international level and it's my honor to introduce professor dr nj pawar vice chancellor of dpu phd degree in geology from university of pune he was recipient of the young scientist award in 1984 instituted by indian science congress association for his research work he received the prestigious british council fellowship for carrying out post doctoral research at university of east anglia norwich in uk during his tenure as a vice chancellor of shivaji university kolhapur sir established two new academic programs school of nano science and technology and yashwant rao chavan school of rural development with his persistent efforts several mous were signed at international and national level strengthening industry academia program lupin infosys to name a few sir in his professional career of over 35 years has contributed immensely especially in terms of his specializations in hydrogeology and environmental geochemistry successfully guided the phd scholars published over 75 research papers edited four research volumes two abstract volumes and translated two books on popularization of science besides several popular articles in recognition of his research work he was elected as a fellow of maharashtra academy of science fellow of geological society of india and many more sir has made important contribution to national level research program launched by department of science and technology government of india he developed collaborative research plan with osaka city university japan and was also involved in multi university international research between universities of european union india and south east asia he strongly believes that it is of prime importance to share knowledge and information with the local communities so that informed choices and decisions can be made for social good we welcome you sir i would like i would like to request our director dr meghna villare ma'am to felicitate proper professor dr n j pawar thank you madam thank you ma'am with thank these you. words with these words i request sir to please enlighten us with his word of wisdom over to you sir thank you i hope i am audible to all of you yes sir properly audible so uh, good afternoon to all of you uh, dr sakshina ji dr divan dr kilare madam dr vadaskar all the participants and my dear friends at the outset let me congratulate uh, dr meghna khilare and dr vadaskar for having organized this particular seminar for two days in which you all have discussed and deliberated on post covid business scenario i'm sure that the participants those who those who participated in two days of this particular seminar must have gained lot of new ideas as to how they will provide the leadership in their own sector particularly in the area of management friends all of us are aware that never ever before at least in our lifetime we had faced such a grave situation 
particularly in the fan in the in the form of pandemic and during the pandemic the whole life was brought to stand still and therefore during this particular process when everything was stand still there were some kinds of ways and means some of the systems could provide education is one of them we could show some resiliency of the system and then immediately started adopting new ways of teaching and learning through virtual mood and therefore that is something which the education has responded there were many sectors those which were completely affected worst hit was aviation industry tourism industry manufacturing and many more particularly hoteling industry and many more they were totally affected because of the pandemic what was really required by the systems is to show some kind of resiliency in terms of such kind of grave situations the service sector immediately responded to that and therefore henceforth the leaders in the area of the management education and also in the area of the business they will have to now think in terms of using to the utmost possibility all such kinds of technologies which dr saxena just now narrated in more and greater details and therefore rather than providing transactional leadership in the area of management i am sure that the leaders in the area of management will provide transformational leadership this will be possible particularly from the root level approach to the top level approach rather than top down approach and this is something which is expected out of the pandemic which has hit hard every sector the business in the years to come will require lot of application of technology no matter whether you are in manufacturing whether you are in any other area but new ways new ideas will have to be searched for this will enable the system to be more resilient in any such kind of event where we have limitations in terms of delivery of goods delivery of other things and that should not happen because of the technology now it has been possible for us to adapt to changes quickly i am sure that during the last two days of these kind of conferences and workshop some such kinds of deliberations must have taken place and during this particular seminar whatever is the knowledge that is gained by the participants they will carry it back home to apply in their own areas of expertise i am sure that this will help change the scenario in the days to come particularly in the area of management therefore i once again congratulate dr meghna khilare and dr vadaskar and whole of their team for having organized this kind of workshop i must appreciate the presence of dr saxena from aict which has supported this particular program and also i appreciate the presence of the industry leader mr deva anmon who has also joined online this particular program i think the persons from various sectors will certainly help the students and teachers from the area of management education in terms of application of mind in terms of such kinds of situations which may or may not arise in the future but we should be ready to face any kind of challenge in the future and that kind of transformational leadership will certainly be provided by the new generation of leaders in the management education and therefore i wish all the success to those who have participated in this particular workshop for their future endeavor endeavors and once again i congratulate our team dr kilare madam and vadaskar and their team for having organized this i wish all the success and good luck to this particular program thank you very much thank you sir thanks a lot thank you sir thank you for sharing your expertise and knowledgeable pertaining to scientific reforms in various industries although resiliency is there but find new way to lead for redefining business management in post covid era thanks a lot sir thanks once again sir thank you set a goal so big that you can't achieve it until you grow into the person who can 
and this is truly justified for next guest of honor mr pankaj divan a moon shoot thinker dreamer self confessed technology addict active enabler in the startup ecosystem eternal optimist and motivator mr pankaj divan sir founder of india's largest innovation consulting company india labs future tech ventures and co-founder of a boutique blockchain company block 91 as managing director of idea labs he works closely with government policy makers academia and global ecosystem to build a framework for assuring innovation and entrepreneurship he recognized for innovation and a startup ecosystem in india by global council for promotion of international trade and blockchain influencer in india by singapore fintech forum he is an advisor and mentor on the board of several prestigious universities and startups like global entrepreneur foundation south korea indo swedish startups accelerator t hub working on solutions in emerging technologies like iot blockchain ai ml and cyber security he is also co-chair of open innovation state innovation cell government of telangana his vision is to spread technology awareness among common masses and make india self reliant we welcome you sir i would like to request our director dr meghna billare ma'am to felicitate mr pankaj divan sir thank you ma'am i would request sir to share his valuable experience with us over to you sir thank you uh, so first of all uh, thank you dr meghna and dr vishal for inviting me here and uh, i must start, i must start by saying this felicitation is a very innovative thing and i'm going to copy it because it <laughs> adds so much uh, uh, this thing right um, personally of course i feel dwarfed uh, uh, being uh, i love to speak after dr pawar and after dr neerat saxena i think uh, there's nothing much i will be able to add value after what they have spoken each uh, word that dr neerat saxena spoke i think uh, needs so much more discussion and uh, self realization and internalization and the endorsement uh, of the same by dr pawar and uh, the articulate way in which he mentioned about uh, post covid world uh, i am i enjoyed this session more as a learner and i'm glad that i'm here because i learned so much from both these uh, eminent uh, people uh, i would just like to probably add a few things as a observer as a learner as a student of this industry that i have been for last 20 years incidentally i am in a management school today at indore where we are talking about blockchain and how blockchain will uh, you know evangelize and transform things and uh, <clears throat> it's very interesting because till about last 10 years uh, we used to tell all the engineering graduates that you need to understand a little bit of management uh, otherwise it's difficult to survive and today we are talking to the management students and telling them you need to understand a little bit of technology otherwise it's difficult to survive huh? so the world has in a way changed 180 degrees uh, from engineering graduates aspiring to learn management to management graduates aspiring to learn technology and i come from a hardcore technology background so i am only grinning that there is so much opportunity for uh, people from technology background to do to make to build right and our prime minister always keeps talking about the demographic dividend uh, and the onus of making this demographic dividend a reality lies with the academic institutes lies with the faculty otherwise it's a ticking time bomb uh, what is such a great benefit to us can also get into a very huge social unrest and that is where my request with folded hands to all the faculty members across all the institutions is to understand their importance i think their role today is more important than a soldier their role today is more important than a farmer because they are the true change makers their impact on the young students the way they interact with the students the way they make the students realize the world outside is what they are going to become and i can i can relate it back to my student days 
and whatever little i have been able to achieve in life today is only thanks to my mentors because they presented to me a world where they told that everything is possible you can have global benchmarking you can achieve whatever you have dreamt about and support it with lot of hard work and mentoring so i think as faculty members of management institute it's very very important for uh, uh, them to also become learners we are no longer living in a society where anyone can call themselves as an expert all of us are learners and all of us have to be continuous learners and if we can ingrain those same qualities in our students when they are passing through our portals of education i think we would have done the best national service added to that is probably one more point which i feel very closely is about entrepreneurship and a lot of times people think uh, entrepreneurship is about starting up and then they ask questions about how can everyone be an entrepreneur how can everyone be a startup uh, to me entrepreneurship is slightly different uh, the way i look at it everyone should be an entrepreneur not everyone may start up because even if you are doing a job today you have to be an entrepreneur and to me entrepreneur is someone who is proactive entrepreneur is someone who takes things in their control doesn't blame the system around so for me dr pawar is an entrepreneur dr saxena is an entrepreneur dr meghna belare is an entrepreneur all of them are entrepreneurs because they see the vision and they move things towards fulfilling that vision that quality of thought process is very important we cannot have a workforce which lives on instructions which follows instructions we have robots we have enough bots which follow instructions and do the task we have to make our students understand that it is time to take control of their future it is time to take control of the future of their organizations that shift in mindset will make a huge difference the only reason why india is perhaps not able to achieve the potential uh, that we should be is because we have to get through that mindset of being proactive and it's a very big paradox while uh, even in elections nowadays the biggest uh, 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 the biggest uh, reason seems to i mean the biggest agenda seems to be unemployment the fact is because i come from industry there is a clamor for talent and people are willing to pay 2x 3x for good talent so uh, we should be able to change this at one level we have industries who don't have talent and they are saying we are not able to grow because we don't have enough talent and at the other side we are talking about uh, unemployment so i think it is for uh, good institutes like dy patil institute to bridge that gap set an example be a thought leader uh, show how we can make people industry ready and that can only happen by participation of industry that can uh, happen only by continuous dialogue continuous validation and events like this where there is an open mind to think exchange ideas and out of this manthan something interesting and something important will certainly come out so i congratulate uh, the institute for being a thought leader in thinking and in coming out with such kind of events i am sure it must have benefited the participants a lot and 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 just the kind of people that you mentioned at the inaugural conference and today i am also lucky to be part of this conference where dr saxena dr power are uh, here i think one thought can make a difference to a person's life one idea can make a difference to a person's life so we will never know what is that thought what is that idea which is striking someone in this audience and they will become the change maker so my request is to continue these kind of events continue this kind of dialogue and uh, sure enough we have a very bright future because when we see young students especially in tier 2 tier 3 towns and cities uh, my heart fills with joy the kind of excitement they have the kind of energy they have the kind of uh, dreams they have i think uh, it's a unstoppable uh, thing that we are all into uh, the only regret i have in life is probably i was born 20 years earlier i should have been a engineer now i should have you know graduated out of college like dy patil now i think uh, i would have conquered uh, 100 things more than what i have ever done in my lifetime so thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, my pleasure to be here with all of you thank you thank you very much sir for your thought provoking address i am sure that this will definitely create positive turbulence in mindset of our research fraternity faculty and mentor as well thanks once again thanks a lot sir now i would like to invite dr tejashi talla conference co convener to propose vote of thanks followed by award ceremony
Thank you, Priya. I deem it is a great privilege to represent DYPMR as I stand here today. On behalf of it, thank you all whose contribution has made the Institute proud. And also to thank all those whose efforts have made this conference a truly grand success. The participants were very enthusiastic. I am thankful to all the participants for attending this conference. We have been fortunate to have some of the eminent speakers from academia and industry. I'm sure that the participants must have benefited by adding this conference. I, Dr. Tejasri Talla, on behalf of Dr. D.Y. Patil Institute of Management and Research is proposing vote of thanks on this occasion. I am thankful to our management for giving us the opportunity to hold an AICT sponsored two days national conference on redefining business management post-COVID technology and economic challenges. I sincerely thank AICT for funding this conference. I place on records our deep sense of gratitude to Honorable Dr. P.D. Patil Sir, Honorable Dr. Somnath Patil Sir for the faith reimposed in DYPMR team. We are really thankful to you for being with us. Your presence has added grandeur to our function. We have been fortunate to be assisted by our director, Dr. Meghna Bilare, Associate Director, Dr. Vishal Vadaskar, and Mrs. Manisha Pawar, ma'am, for taking the initiative for hosting a conference sponsored by AICT and also for their inspiring mentorship. I sincerely thanks our chief guest, Dr. Anil Sahasrabuddhe, sir, Chairman AICT, for his valuable presence. Our guest of honor, Dr. Parag Kalkar, sir, Dean of Faculty of Commerce and Management, Savitribai Phule Pune University who explained how the task force work culture has come up in this pandemic situation. I also thank our guest of honor, Dr. G.K. Pillai, sir, Managing Director and CEO of Janam TV for accepting our invitation and gracing the inaugural function who has thrown lights on technology and economic challenges after COVID-19, who also explained survival and revival issues where the biggest challenges and the technology is the second. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Dr. Salish Kasande, sir, for his contribution in giving valuable inputs and excellence cover on the post-COVID technology and economic challenges in business management, nationally as well as globally. Sir, also covered the need of digital transformation in all the domains. Further, we are grateful to Mr. Vikramjit Bayana for highlighting on how technology plays a vital role in marketing and, and also its importance in modern marketing success with agility. In this digital era, marketers need to build digital relationship and reputation with their customers for sustainability that is also only possible by digital transformation. I must also thankful to the keynote speaker Ms. Shilpa Nimbalkar and Mr. Uttam Kinange sir for accepting our invitation and contributing their knowledge of business management post-COVID. I also thank Dr. Neera Saxena sir, Dr. N.J. Pawa sir and Mr. Pankaj Divan sir who blessed us with their online presence. We got valuable inputs from them too in this conference. I thank all the distinguished delegates who have accepted our invitation and given generous of their time. Your participation as a session chair, I am sure, will add depth to the content and deliberation. Thank you for coming. Now, I take this opportunity to thank all the reviewers and technical committee members for providing their valuable comments in time and help towards the improvement of quality of the papers presented in the conference. An event of this magnitude requires meticulous planning and execution and an eye for the detail. I have been extremely fortunate to be able to draw upon the willing support of my colleagues who have demonstrated initiatives and involvement at every step and make this task easier. I acknowledge the unwavering support received from our HODs, the faculties and the staff members. I would like to thank our digital partners as well. My thanks also go to all the people who have given their precious time in organizing the conference. I'm also thankful to all the research scholars who have greatly helped us in organizing this conference. I also thank my 
my colleagues dr priyanka dut dr hital bide and ms priya tiwari for their enormous cooperation in organizing this event my thank also goes to all the people who have given their precious time in this organizing this event in particular i would like i would like to acknowledge and thanks mr ravi kiran bhatale for technical support ms sita lumbarkar for coordinating the food and refreshments ms rupal choudhury dr rupal choudhury for managing the website i cannot thank everyone enough for their valuable involvement and their willingness to take the completion of the task beyond their comfort zones now on our part we have also made sincere efforts to enhance the quality of the conference now i take this opportunity to declare the best research papers ravi sir over to you the third best paper awarded awarded to author mr zafar hamad khan research scholar from sppu and dr shakab ahmed mumtaz hussein the research guide on the title impact of technological innovation on business performance a systematic review of literature using prisma framework congratulations to the authors thank you ma'am thank you now the second best paper is awarded to to the author mr javid on the title green hrm in covid 19 an opportunity in disasters congratulations you to sir thank you ma'am the first best paper in this conference is awarded to it is to mr suyo suyo chacher and dr bharat kasasar on the title of a study on the factors influencing purchase the purchase decision for personal accidental insurance among salaried individuals in pune city congratulations sir <coughs> the best papers awarded will be will be awarded with the prize amount respectively as declared earlier the new normal of this years i aid are far more tech driven with more big challenges if the time is money then today you have spent millions for us thank you all for making this event successful now i request everyone to raise to the on their places for national anthem जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे thank you all very much indeed thank you all i now declare that the two days national conference comes to an end thank you very much thank you everyone